Hey guys, what's going on? It's Dan Geese and welcome to episode three of the podcast. We got a little bit update, a lot of Q&A for you in today's episode. But first and foremost, thank you so much for tuning in, whether you're listening from Skokie, Illinois, or from your home in Anchorage, Alaska. I appreciate you being here. 83 episodes. I don't know what it is about the number 83, but I checked. I'm like, man, 83 episodes of the podcast. We've been cruising and uh, thank you guys for all the love. It means a lot. So we're going to jump right in to almost the Q&A. Uh, I just want to give you a quick little update on YouTube. And it's a one hit Marty. So yesterday, I, I wa- you guys know I've been wanting to change things up on YouTube. So I'm like, let me record this game called Polybridge, which is out of our wheel space. And I'm going to edit it. And I found myself doing one thing. You know, I thought the video was pretty good, but then when I edited, I'm like, man, this is really kind of fun. I, I really found myself enjoying the editing process and it was a little bit different. I, I, when I was done with the product, with the final video, I was laughing. I felt good about it, but I also felt more apt to share it and talk about it a little bit more because I, I was putting in definitely a lot more effort into the post-production versus like if I just record, hit record something and post it. So it's, it's something I'm going to be thinking about tracking and maybe doing a little bit differently. The only thing is, is that when I do a video like that, it, you know, it takes up a little more time, but maybe that's the move. I don't know. Maybe the move is produce less videos on less YouTube exclusive videos and make them more hits, you know, put a little time in them, do some editing. And cause I, I've really found myself enjoying it and, it, and I don't know. So we'll see. I, I think right off the bat, it's a little too early to tell, but the early numbers are saying people also enjoy them. I don't know if it's because they were edited. I don't know if they, because, because the games are a little bit zany. I did the same thing with this bike, go, this bike game called guts and glory, but it is something that I am going to be cons- doing more of and just kind of finding that balance. Maybe I do one edited video or not. I don't know, but I, I do feel like this. I feel like whatever platform you're on, you need to speak. I don't want to say you need to. I, I think it for me off of what I've learned I feel like I always do best when I speak the native language of the platform on. So for example, Twitch, don't put videos on Twitch, right? You you put on a good live stream, Instagram, very pretty pictures being smart dialed in, in the bios, not uploading YouTube videos to Instagram, uh, TikTok, not just posting videos there, learning what the TikTok language is, how to put it together. And YouTube, I, th- I don't know, uh, maybe it is more edited videos, but that's the space where I, if I were to say what, what is the language of YouTube, it's edited, highly entertaining videos and very few, you know, and I think there's a few exceptions, exceptions with the unicorns. I think there's very few really good YouTube channels that don't put up edited content. And I hope that I can stand correct and you can tweet me and say, hey, Dan, here's a really good one. And, and I think the unicorn, we all know who the unicorn is. But outside of that, I, I really, I don't know. I, I'm i not sure. And, and, and anytime I, my answer is I'm not sure, I'm going to figure it out. And in, in terms of what it means for us and for us on the channel. So that's been kind of like a nice little little hit or a little, you know, little change up, a little a little discovery in that area, both in that it's working or what I believe to be working. And also it was fun. And, it, you know, I felt like some creative sauce going. So that was exciting. So outside of that, let's go ahead and jump right in to the Q&A. So I like to do these roughly once a month and, and you know, and I hope that you guys enjoy them. Well, I guess at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what I like. It matters what you guys. And, and I, I think that people enjoy this. So we're going to jump into the first one. I'm going to rotate in between Instagram questions and the YouTube community page, which is kind of like the Facebook page. So the first one is from Tim Condon on YouTube. It says, Dan, what were your best slash worst experiences in academia, a.k.a. school? Would you recommend it for others to choose as an occupation? And if so, would you give... What advice would you give on both trying to get there and when you get there? So I'm guessing what Tim is asking, what were my best school experiences and my least best school experiences? I think number one, my best school experience was my junior year in high school. I took a film study class and the teacher was really, really different. Avant-garde was highly regarded in the school as, oh, her name was Miss Last and, and you know, since she's, she's passed away, but man, I, I, you know, remember so much about her, she, you know, she was kind of, people thought she was kind of the quote unquote weird teacher, but 
once I took her class, you know, my mind was just blown. She really had a passion and an understanding for film. I took a film study class and it really made me stop looking at, at film as like movies and like film and cinema. And she had just taught us so much about things like tropes and lighting and different messaging in movies and just so much depth. And we watched so many classic movies that I never, ever, 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 ever would have watched. Things, you know, that my dad tried to get me to watch. Like, Dad, I'm not watching this movie from 1960 or 70s. Like, Cool Hand Luke or One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Just so many movies like that that just, or uh, the one with Dustin Hoffman. Not uh, the, the famous one. The, the Graduate. I never would watch any of those if it wasn't for Miss Last. And so I just really appreciate that. I really enjoyed that class and what she brought to the table. We had to make it our own movie at the end of it. I, I got to find that. It's on VHS and maybe one day I'll share it. But I'd say that was my best experience. And I, and I think what that ties to is that I was genuinely interested in that and then aligned with a really, really good, passionate and different teacher made it a really, really interesting experience for me and very memorable even to this day. And I'd say maybe on the flip side, one that I really didn't enjoy is just really a lot of the classes or things that I that I had to take that I didn't really like. And and I guess to, to kind of tie that all together for your, your question is what advice would I give is just that just be aware of, of the classes and subject matters you're all in on and that you really enjoy and take more of those. And I know it sounds like a really simple thing, but also don't beat yourself up over the classes you don't like and just kind of get through those and, and do the best you can. But that's kind of the system. And, and so I think, you know, tying things back to what we talked about at the beginning, I'm really enjoying editing videos, but, but I've got so much to learn and I enjoyed learning. Like I learned a couple different things because I didn't know how to do them, like how to render little sections of video. And so you, you know, with the internet, you can self-teach yourself so so many things whether programming editing accounting whatever you're interested in if you're if you're finding yourself you don't you're not taking that class look into it online on youtube and and just start to learn and see if like oh this is cool but basically what i'm what i to kind of wrap up the whole your whole answer tim is just literally do the thing that you think you want to do try it and then you'll you'll start to cross some things off your list all right next question is Revenant of Daybreak off YouTube, the YouTube uh, page says, what makes a game, no matter what genre, enjoyable and fun to you? Also, hope you're having a wonderful day. Yo, I appreciate it, Revenant. So for me, I like very difficult, challenging games. And what kind of helped me understand that was I would start to play games that were just very, very similar, like, like very ga games that were like on a certain path and on a track They keep you on a rail they try to tell a story. I f started to find myself really just kind of tuning out of those games. And then when I got into Dark Souls, I, I just really love, I think it's like anything else. I love the, the very difficult challenge of a lot of things. If something's really easy, I tend to shy away from it because it ends up not really being that fun, whether it's, you know, trying to build a YouTube channel or, a, you know, a Twitch show or beating a game like Dark Souls or Bennett Foddy. I just find fun in the challenge. And so I think any game that's highly, highly challenging, I think will naturally always, I think will be fun for people to watch on, on any of the, the platforms I am, because you'll see me having a lot of fun with them. And the games that aren't fun for me right now are, are a lot of the, the triple a kind of standard titles that, that they're not bad games. They just kind of don't stoke the fire for me. So when I play a game, I think the first thing I look for now is it's got to be pretty challenging because that's pretty important to me. All right, next question. I'm going to flip over to Instagram. And so the next question, the first question from Instagram is from Dunlop Sam on Instagram. It says, what are your favorite interviews you've ever been a part of? I think any of my favorite interviews I've been a part of, whether interviewing someone, I'll go on the other side because I really don't talk about being interviewed too much. Anytime I've, I've done an interview with someone who I know have, has done their homework, and kind of ask, ask the atypical questions because, you know, through being on reality TV and, and Big Brother a couple times, 
you know, I've done a fair amount of interviews and a lot of them are very, very similar questions, which I'm, I'm always thrilled and, and happy to answer. But you can always tell when someone goes the, the extra mile and will maybe ask you a little something off the wall. And, and so off the top of my head, I, you know, I don't think there's too many that, that stick out. I think most recently in terms of, you know, Big Brother, I think Taryn did a really good job. But that's kind of his deal is he, he really goes pretty deep. So I think that was probably one of the more memorable ones because I knew he did some homework. And I knew it wasn't just going to be a, another a standard interview. So I hope that that answers your question. Next one off Instagram says, this is from My Name is Jacob. So what was it like transitioning transition from teacher to reality TV star? I don't know about that. Went to stream or YouTube. I think teacher to going on reality TV was fairly fluid because you didn't really know what was happening, right? You were locked away and then you come out and you're like, wow. And then that's kind of when it hit. So I, I think that was definitely challenging because you essentially go from no one knowing who you are to a small subset of a subset of a, of a genre really kind of being into who you are if that makes sense so that was a little bit interesting to comprehend but then i think maybe the more challenging one was was to pivot from from just doing that or just talking about that online to really going all on going all in on what I really love to do on a day to day, which is make, you know, clean, positive gaming entertainment. That took a long time. And there were times when like there'd be moments of, okay, hey, I'm 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 excited that people are tuning in, but I know a lot of these people are watching the Twitch show because of Big Brother. And it just took years upon years upon years upon years where it's fun for me now for people to be in the show and be like, oh, I didn't know you're on Big Brother. It, to me, it, it, it's just, it's a lot of hard work and a lot of persistence and a lot of just staying consistent. So I would say neither of which were easy, but both were equally rewarding. All right, I'm going to flip back to an, another question from YouTube. It's from James Erickson it says, what's your favorite example of something exceeding your expectations? Wow. That's, that's an interesting one because I think what what's always helped me is I always am careful about setting expectations because if you set things too high, if you go in with no expectations, essentially everything's always great. And so I think for me being able literally to kind of go in with no expectations on everything is really a fun way to go through life because then you're you're always get good stuff. And so, for example, I mean, this is really, really, really super recent. I've talked about it once already, but the game Polybridge, it's been out for two years. And I kind of went in and I'm like, all right, I'm just going to try it. I don't even know how it got on. Oh, because I saw there was a sequel coming out. I'm like, okay, this is definitely not my kind of game. It's going to be super DAE, super intellectual. And I'm like, so I almost went in with inverted expectations. And I went in and played it. I'm like, wow, this is actually really fun. And there's some... Um, some really laughable moments in it. So that was that was kind of cool. So I'd say that's that. But but for the most part, when I go into stuff, it's really, I just kind of go into it for what it is. All right, next question is from Boom on, on YouTube. Says, what can, when can we expect some Magic the Gathering content from you? I'd say outside of opening a revised pack of cards, I'd say very slim, but you never know. Uh, next question, we'll go to Instagram here. <laughs> Instagram, this one is... From Marin Ace 55 have I ever seen The Godfather? I have seen The Godfather. I've seen it maybe once or twice. And with classic films like that, I only like to watch them like once every couple of years because I never want to burn them out. I really liked it. I believe it's a 9 or 10 out of 10 on dangeasting.com slash movies. Really good. Highly recommend it. Next question is from Roberts White's Neighborhood on Instagram. It says, any help with motivation stretching even into daily life when something like a channel or project I think goes over time. So to me, my big thing on motivation is, and I talked about this on check the wire with Ryan and tomorrow's episode is that if you feel like you're having to force yourself to do something outside of working out, cause working out can like it's beneficial, but it's hard to do right but outside of something like that's really good for you that you know you have to do, if it's something you're spending your free time doing or something you want to build or a business you want to start and you just find yourself like, man, I can't get this going 
or I don't have the motivation to do it. I would rather than fight through all that static and fight through all that friction. I'm more of the along the lines of like do something that isn't like that for you. Because if you're at the point where to even start it or get it going is is you find yourself not being motivated, it's probably not the thing for you because especially for YouTube and Twitch, I can only speak on my end of things, is that that motivation is always there because I really, really enjoy doing it and it's hard. So when it gets to the hard part, if you can't even get up to do it, I would question, I would say, hey, you're, you're probably better off trying to do something else that's more in your lane, something that you would just naturally enjoy. And I think that'll that'll help big time. Uh, and, and that really was, I guess the, the, the real life inspiration I can draw off on that is, I've talked about it before, is I worked, one of my first jobs I got was a really semi-strenuous interview process. It was a pharmaceutical sales job. And it, at the time, at my age, it paid a ridiculous amount, free car, free gas, free salt, like everything, you, you know, financially, it was good. But I, I went to him like, man, I cannot get up for this. And just because I didn't enjoy it, 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 it you know, I, everyone needs money and stuff to live. But it just to me, I, I couldn't see myself doing it. And so wherever that came from, at a young age, I just knew like, man, I can't do that. So I went on to teaching because I, I knew I thought I would enjoy that. And I did enjoy that. So I don't know. Stuff like that is big. DMG2106 on Instagram said, would I ever go on Survivor? I'll tell you what. I never thought I would even consider it. But after watching this season of Winners at War, I'm like, man, that could be a lot of fun. And I think maybe more for from the experimental or experiential experience, like going doing it for experience in terms of how I think I would do. I think I'd do well in the, the mental and social game, but physically, I think it would be a really big challenge. A lot of their challenges are extremely physical and they're depleted. And knowing my skill set, I don't know how I would do like that. I, I really don't. I think in endurance, I could do pretty well, but you know, there's some really physical challenges. So it'd be interesting to kind of, kind of do that. Next question from Instagram says, uh, KS Malem says, I've recently watched Rounders and recognized a bunch of quotes from you. Top five movies. <laughs> so if you, Kevin, if you go to you, uh, dangeesling.com slash movies, it's literally every movie I've watched in the past couple years. And I rate, I rate them all like out of 10. So you could go there and see a ton. And, and off the top of my head, Karate Kid 1, Karate Kid 2. I like Rounders. Uh, I think those are Bad News Bears, the original from 1976, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Those are all classics. The Graduate. I talked a few about a few from uh, Miss Last film study class. Usual Suspects. All really good. But but all my they're all rated. Go to dangeesling.com slash movies, which leads you to an IMDB page of all our, our ratings of movies. I think that will, especially if you're you're looking for something to watch in this time, my ratings will not steer you wrong. I promise you, in terms of, of the movies that I like. Uh, next question, as a streamer, you probably have more experience in than dealing in isolation. Any advice? Uh, I don't know. I, I, my only advice is just that, you know, I just feel, it sounds strange, but I just feel grateful. You know, I'm healthy. We have stuff to entertain ourselves. And I know it's pretty rough out there, but I don't know. I, I just try to look at it being grateful for what I do have as opposed to what's going on out there. And I just try to stay just optimistic. You know, it's kind of like, hey, do you believe in, for me, and I don't want to get super deep on this topic, but do you believe that humanity can overcome this? And, and my answer is yes. And so I think that helps, you know, and, and I don't watch really any news or I don't consume a lot of uh, really any, any news or any kind of, I don't want to call it negative content, but... I just kind of learn what I need to learn to, to keep myself and my family safe. And outside of that, I just kind of stay in my lane. Uh, so I hope that helps. Next question is from Albert T T O S on Instagram says, got any tips about how to go about asking questions and making feel people important, make, making people feel important in a conversation. Number one, uh, you know, uh, to make someone feel important, you actually have to feel that way. Right. So, you know, if, if, the way you can do that is number one, it's gotta be true. You can't like fake and make someone feel important if they're not. I mean, you can, but I don't recommend that. But the number one thing I, 
I do, and I'd recommend just ask people questions and, and you'll hear me talk about this from now until the end of time. Most people love to talk about themselves and are wired to talk about themselves all the time. What most people are not wired to do is ask questions about someone and be genuinely interested in. So my, an my answer to you is ask questions, but really get, want to know the answers. Uh, next question is from Karma on Instagram says resin on Animal Crossing. Yes and no. I think there's no resin on Animal Crossing because there's no one way to play it. So in terms of resin being like, are there any cheats or social hacks? Do what do what you enjoy on Animal Crossing. There, it's an it's one of the few no resin zones. <laughs> uh, next one is from Miho Mylan on Instagram. So I just got married to the one I love since childhood. I love it. advice. Best advice is, is just listen. Listen as much as possible. All right, next question on Instagram is from D.I.P. Bood on Instagram. It says, how do you deal with stressful situations like having a packed schedule in a week? I think the way I deal with something like that is just know that, you know, at the end of the day, you're still in control as much as your schedule as much as possible. And if you can get the stuff you have to do that you don't want to do out of the way as fast as possible, you know, you can set something sometime in your schedule, whether it's five or 10 minutes or 15 minutes, squeeze something in there as a, as a reward uh, for kind of getting through a rough time. All right. Next question says from Hirschman on Instagram says, what steps to grow your channel have been unsuccessful and why? A lot of them. So in terms of things unsuccessful, every things all the time are unsuccessful. And uh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. You, you just don't know. Like uh, the way I look at it is every time I'm unsuccessful, it gets me one step closer. For example, I think what's, what's been like a big flop. I, I'll tell you a flop. Uh, and it's something I enjoy. I've been doing Spelunky runs on YouTube, trying to get to the city of gold. And in comparison, you know, the videos flop in, in compared to what I've been doing lately with the edited content. So I'd say that's something that's not successful. But at the same time, I'm careful I would say it because I appreciate the people dialing in. So, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, there's things that happen all the time, but I don't I don't put too much thought into it outside of checking something off the list and being, OK, hey, that didn't work. Let me try something new. All right, uh, we'll do a few more questions here from Instagram. Next one says, all right, when, this is from Wally Renfield, when I get frustrated or down, what do I do mentally to pick myself back up? If I get frustrated or down, I'd say like legit if I get rattled. The number one thing I'll do is I'll go for a run. That's like my number one go-to thing or do something physical for two reasons. One Mentally, it gets my mind off whatever I'm occupied with that's got me rattled. And two, physically, you'll feel better after. And and mentally, I always feel better after. So I, that's my number one go-to move. If if I can't do that for whatever reason, or you're not into running or working out, uh, you know, I'd recommend going for a walk. The second thing is drop whatever's got you uh, messed with at the time and go do something else. You know, maybe it's something like a quick leisure activity, but anything, anything that is the opposite of what you're thinking about. So that way you have a little clarity to step away and then come back. It, that that's always, that's my go-to for me. Uh, next question is how did I meet Northern Lion coin laundry on Instagram? There's check out the podcast I did, did with Mathis. I believe it's one of the first episodes. I want to say episode six or seven. You can check it out. We, we talk about that story in depth, but long uh, short story Mathis introduced us and Josiah on Instagram says how do you find a passion to follow just uh, just start doing things start doing things you think you like so that you'll find out oh I don't really like this and then cross cross it off list go to the next thing what you do what I'll tell you that's one thing to do one thing not to do is think about things don't think about things just go do things if you want to program Go look at programming HTML on YouTube. If you want to paint, go look at how to paint on YouTube. If you want to uh, start a podcast, start a pod record on your phone right now, go to Anchor, upload it. But just whatever you think you want to do, do it. And you'll find out pretty quick, hey, this is cool, or hey, I don't like doing this. And then you can move on to the next thing. 
Uh, this next question is from El Real Tristan on Instagram. It says, you may have answered it before, but why have you chosen to stop doing long-term series? Great question. So in my, I used to do, in the, in the early days of YouTube, I used to do long series like Fallout New Vegas was 80 plus episodes or what, I, you know, The Walking Dead. I stopped doing that for two reasons. One, I already do those on Twitch with the single player game. So I'm doing that live. And then for people that want to watch it, I'm also uploading them on the second YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Danny Geesing plays. So that's number one reason. So people that like that style of content from me, it's still available in a slightly different format, but it's still available on the same platform where you might've watched it. The second thing I've realized is that it doesn't really work on two fronts. One, it'll start out like episode one. There's a lot of action. Then it'll slowly kind of die off. And I'm talking about a, a single player experience with a beginning, middle, and end. And so so that's two. And then the other thing is it doesn't really work for me, meaning that if it's a game that I want to play all the way through, I'd rather play it on Twitch than kind of burn it on YouTube just because it doesn't really work. On the flip side, on YouTube, what I find works is roguelikes for me work because I get, I get up for those, I get excited and they're not they won't be on twitch all the time i get excited for one-off kind of different videos on youtube and if i'm doing a long-term series that eats up a big slot of time that i can to that i can to make that stuff so i think maybe the only caveat to that would be hollow knight and i don't know i don't know i i don't have an answer for you we could do a Hollow Knight series on YouTube only because I don't know if it'll make it to Twitch. I don't know if we'll do it for Twitch as a stretch goal or something. I don't know. But that's the only one right now that I would consider. Really, I don't know. And it's one of those things to kind of double back to the last question I answered. I don't know until I try it. So we'll see. Uh, with that being said, thank you guys. Oh, uh, you know what we got? Um, let me hit a few more on, on YouTube. I'm going to answer these as fast as humanly possible. Squidlet Dose on YouTube says, how do you manage being a good father while still being a good content creator? To me, it's just an ebb and flow thing, right? Uh, if I feel like I'm dropping the ball in one area, I'll, I'll take time away from work and spend more time with the family and vice versa. But I just, I just listen to my internal speaker and, and really listen to what's going on in my family. And, and, and I'm lucky I'm, I'm, I have the flexibility to do that, but also... You know, I, I just, I just, I just try to listen as much as possible and feel what's going on and kind of play off of that. Next question is from Saw Guy. It says, how has the texting fan things worked out so far? For example, do you get a lot of responses? Yeah, I get a ton of responses. So much so that you know, it's like a, it's like a flood, and and I just do my best to respond where I'm like way behind. But three one three two four one nine six three nine. If you do want to text me, I, I like it because it's it allows me to connect with people one on one and get to know people in the community a little bit better and also connect with new people. So that's, that's been, I've really enjoyed it so far. So without specific examples, of course, this is from Ted Jammer. What makes a fellow creator, creator easy, hard, good or bad to work with? Okay. The people, uh, traits of people that I enjoy working with me being easy to work with. They're on time. They're down for anything. Easy going. If we got a bit, they run with it. We, we play a similar game. They're, they're not afraid to kind of riff off, off each other. They go with, it's kind of almost like a little improv. They'll go with stuff without, you know, stopping the train. Th things that traits of, 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 that make someone a little bit more difficult to work with. A lot of extra planning, um, burning, a, burning a lot of time planning as opposed to just, just doing. And then, um, uh, I'd say that's the biggest one for me and then not being on time. But, you know, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of, I don't know. Uh, it's a tough question to answer, but I, I like to do stuff with people that are easy. And, and the, if, if something's hard to do with someone, then I either don't do it or, or change kind of tones. Because if it's not easy, like if the chemistry isn't there, it's not really something that you can you can make. It just either happens or it doesn't. And so to me, I'd rather just, you know, tr keep trying to work with new people and, oh, this worked good. This didn't, this was a good fit. This wasn't, and just kind of keep it moving. And then last question is from Dutch Chen on, or Dutchen 18. 
on YouTube says, how do you explain what you do YouTube and Twitch to friends and family not familiar with internet media? Answers I don't. I don't even talk about it. I don't bring it up. If really, if people don't show an interest in it, I never talk about it. I will never bring it up to anyone outside of like my, you know, my, maybe my mom and my dad. Uh, that's about it. I really, I, unless someone asks me, I don't bring it up because one, I, I don't think they care or two, they don't understand or two, they don't understand to care. So I, I'm not going to convince someone to, to care about what I do online or, or what my, you know, what I spend my time doing. Uh, I'd rather just kind of keep the focus off me or talk about something else. And that's the 100% honest answer. With that being said, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed this Q&A podcast. It was a fun one to do. Thank you guys for sending in questions. Hope I answered all of your questions. With that being said, I will see you guys next Monday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I uh, just want to wish you well. Hope you're staying safe, dialing in. And uh, thank you guys so much for sh- supporting the podcast, leaving reviews on iTunes, leaving reviews. There's a couple new ones. Which I appreciate. Let me actually, I'm going to read one of these. This one is from uh, Pi. Uh, let's go this one. Let's go with Lizzie Bear. It says, easy clap, hoggers. That's pretty easy. I appreciate leaving that. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And I will see you guys next week.